but difficult, right? So yeah. um, I'm looking for Liquid's lineup to struggle to find kills early, and if Newbie can capitalize on that, finding their own and this time push and not face an Alchemist late in the draft, <laughs> this time they can actually convert it into a win. I think this is Newbie's best draft for the finals. If they if they can't win this game, then Liquid's just hands the down the better team today, like by quite a lot. They do have the advantage in the lightning phase of Vision while supporting it to get that early game you're talking about, avoiding that the kills, the rotations of GH being effective. The two observer ones from Newbie focus on that hillside to the south of the bottom rune, and the other one smack bang in the middle lane. So Vision is covering the south as well as the mid. Earthshaker, he wants to rotate up towards top lane and try and kill off the centaur. War Runner, good luck, it's going to take you some time to do it. So they're feeling very secure in that lane. In fact, they're even going to run a double lane. Kaka as well as KP are together. So they have a double stun lineup, which should be very, very effective against Miracle. They just have to keep Miracle away from the lanes. And Kaka already doing it. Fire Strike, Hulk Stomp, they're dropping the Juggernaut down to one third of his life. If Kaka can get this body block up as well, Miracle trying to create a little bit of space. Newbie, Miracle has to be forced into the spin. You got a secondary Fire Strike. They can go under the town, but they won't do it. Healing Sound plus Tango being burnt by Miracle. He'll stay safe under the tier one. Good initial pressure from Newbie on this lane. Oh, wait. There you go. Keep trying to connect. Oh. <laughs> the, the, the fissure was raised, but not thrown. There's no kill potential in this mid lane. SCC can't die to these two heroes. There is just absolutely no way unless he completely screws up somehow. So GH is just trying to do whatever little he can to just pressure SC and force him to use some regen. That Fissure did pretty much nothing. Uh, and SC is having a good time here, forcing Matoma Man under his tower with this double wave. And now GH is like, okay, not really happening in mid. I'm going to move towards oh, top. Kaka. Maybe there's an opportunity here. Good Fissure. With the Frostbite and the last attack. From Kuro, That's flying over the rock wall. First blood spilt, very, very aggressive. This is what I'm praising GH for so much. It's that game sense, you know, like he, he goes mid, just shows himself. Newbie are like, okay, Shaker's mid. He vanishes from mid, immediately goes for this play. That is, I, the way I see it, his only kill on the map is this exact hero with this exact ally. It's very, it's a very specific subset of things that need to happen. And Liquid set it up beautifully and get themselves first blood on the Lich. So Kuro getting some fast boots out, ah, and I'll take we'll have plenty of money to take care of courier duty as well. It's oh, another Fissure mid, he has the arcane rune, might as well get a little bit annoying with that. He actually he's holds the creep, bounty runes. he holds the creep way back far enough to the and doesn't even have it coming. Okay, now I'll come under the tower, but that's a double wave for Death Prophet to try and farm up, which is a nice injection of CS and experience into him, unless GH wants to do something about it. But the Observer one from Newbie does scout it out. So even if this Fissure does fly, you can see SCCC understands just how tanky he is and just how much of a hard time Newbie will have to, uh, Tim Liquid will have to kill him. Yes. That's GH at the same time, recognizing that the Bounty Runes cannot have been picked up because all of Newbie's heroes have been showing. So he goes and takes the enemy Bounty Rune first. Now he can still go back toward his own. He has a full minute to do that. It's just going to fissure off Faith and be really annoying. Mind Control actually coming in here with a little two Iron Shell. Faith, there is a crevice to get through. He just needs a little and bit more movement speed. He's going to be fine. 330 versus the 295. Good for a Shaman to have those early boots to keep the run going. Still want to keep my eyes pretty closely on mid. I know it's mainly because we've had uh, the Earthshaker rotating around, but this is the time when Kaka finally moves off the top lane. It is daytime, which makes it difficult for him to close the distance. There is no Dire Observer Ward watching this mid lane. The GH is back. Faith is here as well. Everyone's prepping, apart from Kaka, who's just having a one-on-one -on -one battle for with Kuro. But GH has to be careful of where he is. Faith comes up, the Observer Ward is there. Knows what he's up against, and everyone's just going to run away. But this is a lot better start for Newbie when you look over it. Like, yeah, okay, you gave away first blood, but Moogie's getting really good farm. SCCC's getting really good farm in the mid lane. KP's finding experience on the off lane. So that Stampede arriving at an earlier time is great for Newbie to disengage from Team Liquid's aggression. He's getting good CS as well on the Centaur. I think this hero can fall flat a lot of the time. I think it's really weak without any items. Like, there's a lot of other off lanes in this patch that deal better with being put under pressure, but Centaur really needs like that blank dagger to start having an impact and then compare it over to the Darkster where sure, if you don't have the mech, maybe it's not the best hero, you can at least utilize your team with that Ion Shell. All Centaur really offers is the Stampede, which is nice, but it's an ultimate. So, you know, then you're kind of a walking ulti at that point almost. It's, it's a bit hard to get as much out of your hero. So it's very good news for Newbie that all three of their cores are getting good farm. Kuro is trying to get that aggressive Observer and Sentry Ward down behind KP. 
Either that, they run in towards the mid. Faith able to reveal out Kuro and G8, both Frostblast and the Fissure being committed. Faith taking negligible, negligible damage as Metubberman wants to go underneath the tower. Kuro does put the Observer Ward down. A quick ping came out from Shaman saying that he's around here. He's trying to see if he can get eyes on Kuro and see that he used the ward, but he might just assume that was the case. See, there's no. He'll, he'll get vision now. now. He's walking underneath an observer ward. Right. So yep. yeah, they're, they're pinging, and they pinged exactly the spot of that observer ward. Essentially, it is a guess. Kuro could have also put it on the cliff to the left, but uh, it seems like newbie guessed right. Let's see when they get a sentry out of this ward. That ward is very good. Probably one of the reasons Warden's too why away. they scanned. Like they scanned on top of the on top of the camps, just to the north at that point. So trying to work out if he ran over the top of the ancients or not. So oh, fairly can't. quiet. They this got game. faith up here as well. They're looking at Miracle. Now, do they actually? Kuro. They don't have the hex. Okay, yeah, that'll work. Kuro, the shackles available. Okay, now that hex is up. Level three, he was holding onto it. KP with a double edge. Be faith that takes the kill. So a good movement up from Ruby. They're going to support on exactly the same point they lost their support. Boogie's having the greatest time in the world on bottom. Twenty-one denies and thirty-three last hits. This is still a good dark Seer lane, though. Um, mind control on this hero has had a really high impact in a lot of situations in a lot of games, and it fits very well into Liquid's playstyle of just being able to shove out lanes to get information. So the fact that dark Seer is getting this many levels and farm is, you know, it's it's still a farm venom for sure. But mind control Top lane, getting his miracle. Where's that follow up? Have they got the stun? They do. So there's no spin available. The spirit siphon miracle. This has to take the physical damage. But you cannot do. Great movement up from SCCC. And they can bring that exorcism to bear yeah, on the T1 tower on the top. Definitely going to go for that here. Now that he made the whole rotation up there, they will oh, going to Oh, Boogie. Even trying to surge GH away from that fight. The Observer Ward from Nubi seeing Kuro moving to the top. Kaka and KP, they've already set the strap. Starting off with a double edge, but no, he attacks first with the Frost Armor, attack. slowing up Kaka. Attack. He doesn't have the mana Radiance anyway, so he cannot tower. get the Burrow Strike attack. off but it's allowing SCCC to attack into the tower. So that's the more important thing, the creep skipping. But the TP Dying arriving back, so Miracle back into the lane. Radiance Stopping the tower from falling attack. at least. But it's KB, yeah, he cuts through the trees. Quelling Blade, he doesn't have Hoof Stop, they're so short of mana. At least he got the Barrow Strike back on Karka, but no more Creep Wave under the tower, really. They got a lot of damage into that tower. They could do defend it, but lost a thousand health. And the trade-off is, I guess Matumba did some decent shift damage in mid, but Faith is getting good levels. And you look at this newbie lineup, and you feel like, okay, when they have all of these ultimates available and they have their key items, they will just start almost like death ball, kind of, with their heroes. They just really want to group up as five and take objectives. The question is, if Liquid will have the tools to deal with it in time. I'm pretty sure we're going to see the first Roshan from newbie pretty early in the game. And if Liquid want to get it, they have to steal it. They can't take it themselves. Very unrealistic with their lineup. GH is uh, he's really close to Faith. Fresh observer ward jungle. down. He's got his own observer ward down as well, so Faith will hex him quickly. Shackles not available. In fact, he used the ether shock. So the mana isn't available. In fact, now with Moogie moving over, they have enough to slow through the Plague Ward. Gale's gonna connect on his target. SCCC. They put the Plague Ward up on the hill, realize no one else is there from Team Liquid. But while that's going on, top lane, the spin from Miracle. He has the Omni Slash available, but the Fire Strike from Kaka holding Miracle in position. He'll go into the tree, taking a lot of damage from the tower. Has to have the Healing Ward to give him life. Kaka, Fire Strike in two seconds time. He can go once more, but the Healing Ward's causing problems, but maybe not enough. He has the damage. Does he? The healing ward protection's available with the spin of Miracle. He'll live and sound back up once more. If KP had 100% faith in that perfect Samping stun, I think they could have killed the Jugger together. Pretty sure he had double edge ready again, so... Uh, UB, a little bit of a missed opportunity there, but still good for them to survive at the very least, get their Centaur out of trouble. And the lanes, continuing with the pressure. Venomancer takes the bottom tier one, top tier one. Yeah. Be next on the menu for him. It has Miracle. KP's death. Oh, Great KP. spin. Dodging. That whole stop from KP Kaka. He doesn't have the mana for a bar strike. There was nothing he could do while Miracle was immune. But Matumbleman could do something else. He's ready to wrap around the back. The creep wave's coming under the tower. Ah, oh, the classic Necrophos die. Yeah. Reaper Scythe's available. What are you going to do, Matumbleman? You want to do damage to him? I suppose you can hide invisible. That's a great way to dodge it. Works pretty well. You can still hit death balls, but... 
it would need to lose like four or five of them to kill off Kaka, and Kaka's just gonna back off, get a clarity. Boogie's ready to fight again. Now, feeling the pressure coming on the top lane, they'll fortify up, Fate moving up as well, so Team Liquid, they were hoping for a free tier one tower on this top lane, it ain't gonna happen. Boogie's got his combination ready. And there's a lot of farm, in fact, the fact that Creep Wave is hitting that bottom tier one tower is warning bells for Team Liquid to back off the top lane. I think we're gonna look at a smoke here for a moment for Newbie. They're grouped up as three, with the uh, Poison Nova available as well for Moogie. Could try to look for a kill on in this top area into that tier one tower. If they kill the Juggernaut here, for example, Radiant's that tower is theirs for taking. Is under yes. Meantime, though, it's slow here. There will be a stun coming in from Sand King. Miracle has Omni Slash available, but he knows he doesn't want to do it when Sandstorm's available. That's not the way for him to find a kill. Kaka just wants to push the wave out and get a ward out. He's sitting on two wards in the Sand King, but can't really use it. There's the Stampede, though, and That's this will be the want. kill. The shackles hold him there. That's a huge kill. Miracle to fall with Moogie already up. The tier one tower in the top lane is days numbered. I love plays like this where you can tell Newbie have already set up and coordinated and are ready and are just waiting. Kaka in six. They can set up on this one. Kaka, fire strike. He cannot survive, but Tumberman still having the range for the aura. Level three in it. Kill off Kaka, but he doesn't get scythed to death at least. But a lot of pressure on top lane. Defending their tower actually with this. They, they do have mass serpent parts. I think if they block those down together with the... Uh, the Plague Wards, they will be getting this tower, but... Faith's backing Faith, off. They're Faith switching. wants to go mid instead. Yeah, they're switching their attack to work with SCCC, who's got the Exorcism available. This might be a good idea. This, I mean, the top tower is pretty low, right? So it's a, a big ultimate commitment for such a low tower. This way, they make sure they have a two-lane siege. They're going to get a Burrow Strike around the back, if possible. GH like is just you looking to defend. Akaka, there's your Mass Serpent Wars vision to go out. Burrow Strike going to connect on that mid lane. Exorcism is out too. GH, low on life, doesn't want to come close, but it's Necrophos who's shackled up, taking a lot of damage from that Exorcism. Faith, no, he's going to die. The catapult bouncing off the chain frost. The Dark Sea back wall. Able to make a little bit more problems. Fissure is out, so Akaka being broken out of his sandstorm out of the Invis. SCCC wants to bring the damage in close, but with three heroes already rotated over from Team Liquid, it just ain't going to happen. The only thing which is happening for is that top tier one tower being claimed by Moogie? This mid tower will get denied. So they got all three tier ones in 12 minutes, which is a very good timing, but not really too much of a gold lead to show for it. They've lost a couple of heroes. I think Kaka's died there on the Shaker, very optimistic. Like, there's no real follow up to it, so they couldn't really turn that Sanking stun into anything, and he ends up dying in the end together with the Shaman. Liquid are just playing the small advantages that they do have in the moments to. Keep it a pretty even game. So they have a couple of towers to claim, which means Liquid are ahead on raw farm. There's more gold on the map for them in these towers. Let's see if they want to make a move of their own. Well, they're coming to bottom lane, but KP's already out. TP very quickly away. Yeah, that tower's gone. Yeah, but if they pressure bottom lane, Moogie's already up on top to continue the pressure. You have Stampede available, Radiant's so it kind of gives Moogie the confidence to go a little bit deeper than they normally would. And the fact they're doing that means they can potentially catch out GH. GH is the man who's found blink daggers at insane rates. Now, just has to run away. Sand King has that level three Burrow Strike. He does not have the range on GH just yet, but when GH holds behind the tower, the Observer Ward, it doesn't see him. He's in a small crevice. Now he comes out. Faith will Stampede. see him. Oh. And well, no, they're not going to use it just yet. Necrophos starting his TP in. So Faith will just drag the wave down. I actually thought Kaka had eyes on him earlier and they were going to stampede for it, but I guess he was just outside of the night vision range of Sanking. So, no kill, and Liquid defend. So, buying more time for their lineup, they just need space and time to farm and get these towers. Juggernaut is doing a pretty good job here, Miracle, finding some good farm. The Darkseer has been relatively quiet, but it will now be completing the mech soon. Dyer's uh, middle tower Link, you were talking about attack. it, it's 900 away, but he can farm it pretty quickly with this Ion Shell help on Mind Control. As long as he times the last hits, right? Oh, he's letting Mind Control get someone to see us, actually. Okay, he'll take, that. he'll take the last two. Yep. But this is still a good position for Ruby too. Like, we've been looking for something that gets them back into this series. And having real superb team fight from Ruby, which is an essential thing against Liquid Sustain, that's what it's all about. That's going to give us our clash. That's going to give us our clash we were really searching for. Yes. Ruby need to get a Roche, I think. Get some wards out here, start putting that pressure. They have the Mass Serpent wards, they have the Exorcism. It's a lot of ulti commitments, but it would be a good move. Instead, they're going to turn it into 
a rotation toward top into tier two. That's also a great high impact play if they can pull it off. If they can kill him, a Tumperman is yep. the man looking to build a radiance. Space is going to get close enough to get the hex. Thanks to the observer, what they have behind. They see everything stampeding forward. Exorcism is down. There's a lot of damage. KP is taken, but they'll still get the kill onto a Tumperman. SCC once more. Koro TP'd in to try and help out, but now he's trapped. Kaka, no bar is right for another two seconds, but the Exorcism will do the work. And Koro, Kaka even commits it to ensure it. That has two kills up on the top lane and now pressure to the tier two tower. Looks like Liquid don't want to give up the tower though. They're going to send in Shaker and Darkseid to try and delay this push. Well, Mass Serpent wards are down. Liquid might think twice about it. At least Mind Control gives the Buckler effect, but Kaka, Fire Strike, he's looking at Mind Control, but knowing that GH has the vision behind the lines is not what they want to go into. So they'll let the Mass Serpent Wars die, or maybe not. Miracle's coming in from the south, Fire Strike up, Kaka actually dodging the back, but he cannot dodge the spin of Miracle. He's also Iron Shell bumped up, double TP's out, SCCC, his TP's coming off cooldown in a second, he had to move one of his Null Talismans out of his backpack, yes. and now starts it, but GH Echo slams it down, the silence it needed to connect on the Earthshaker. He tried to get the sounds on both of them, on both the Jugger and Shaker, but GH was just out of range. Difficult to do when you don't have that vision. I think if he committed for a silence on Shaker, he might have lived. I'm not sure if Juggernaut had enough damage with Iron Shell and level 1 Omni Slash to actually kill the DP out of the TP there, but... Good kills for Liquid, they defend their tower, and they, again, they play these small avengers. They had their two dead heroes, and they still defended their tower and found exit kills. Just using that Iron Shell and the rotating Juggernaut very well. I'm still interested to see that, like, when Newbie have Radiance that big strength. Like, they're finding these exit kills, Newbie, uh, Liquid are coming in force, I'm saying they can find them, because you haven't felt the effect of the Venomancer yet. Boogie continues to farm up, and he only really comes to join the fights when this tier 1 tower in the top lane is being threatened. And that's what they're doing. Observe wards on the hillside. Faith gonna move in close enough. They'll get the hex. They can follow up shackles. The vision. Nice from GH. Off stop Stampede from KP. Try to create space. Lich holding won't continue its bounce, however. But KP's on the wrong side of the tracks. Omni Slash. They have enough damage to get through Kanka. But Miracle trapped under the towers. KP still alive. He ran all the way up to the north. Even has his blinker bubble and seals the bounty room from Team Liquid. It's a call for a support. The top tower. It does fall in favor of Matumberman who committed in. SEC's Spirit Siphon not enough to dissuade him from the attempt. Liquid were looking for a vacuum into Fissure combo there, and they got it off decently, but not fully. And the Stampede allowed them to disengage and get out. That looked really scary for Newbie. If they don't have Stampede there, they'll lose like three or four heroes. So the really key abilities for them to have against this new, uh, Liquid lineup, and it's very clear there, you can see what the what the idea behind the what Centaur pick was. Oh, Shay, yeah, has big. Blink Dagger. Yep. They've got that initiation now onto GH. Took if he had seven. that fight, that would have been a stop for Liquid. So, yep. Newbie can't afford to get back in like that again. If they get two or three hero backed into Shaker Echo, the fight's just lost. Yep. Gotta be really careful. That's when they're gonna need the maneuverability. From Bow Stampede, the space creation from Centaur. The fact that Venomancer will soon have his full Hurricane Pike. You need a Yule Scepter for SCCC to stay alive. And that is coming out in the Courier. In fact, both of those items are arriving on the Courier. Maneuverability getting better. Interestingly, the Faith is actually not helping him out with maneuverability. He's going straight for push lineup. He's going for the Aghanim Scepter rush on the Shaman after having uh, the, just the Arcane Boots. Kind of shows what the game plan is, right? Like you, push want, you, want, you want the Shaman to hit a timing when, when they can just go to try and end the game. Uh, a lot of the time we see Shamans go for Staff, Glimmer, or Blink. And all three items have their value in the game. That's a nice rune. Damn. Double damage rune, but the bad thing is the Echo Slam catching up at SCCC. They're already using that Hurricane Pike to get him free, but the Stampede, they'll turn around. Massa boards it down too. They find the kill of the Earthshaker. Now Nubi, want to roll with the momentum into Mind Control, who stands his ground, taking it for the team. Exorcism has been burnt, and there is a Creep Wave here to work with. But what Nubi want is something bigger. They want Roshan. This is their good timing for this. 10 seconds on Shaker, 30 on the Darkseer. Don't think Liquid are in any position to contest this. This was the big moment we were waiting for for Newbie, where they find the key kills close to that objective. And getting the full value out of Exorcism here, he's even going to heal up to full here. SCC did so much damage with the Ghosts that he's ready to go somewhere else. Roche will fall, and they'll probably give the Aegis to the Venomancer. And it is on Boogie. GH has to be really sad. That was the first reveal of his Blink Dagger, and it didn't really come with the big impact they wanted. Miracle has still been able to find a lot of farm in the meantime, rapidly approaching his Manta style. But he's still behind in the net worth, only by 600. And that's to the Venomancer. Hurricane Pike, Aegis yes. Immortal. 
What else? He hasn't have anything else coming out at the moment. He's just got those critical items. The pike made that fight, by the way. The, the, the force step or the pike usage immediately on the death prophet got him into a very good position where Yubi could counter engage. Right? Not sure, Liquid were probably not accounting for that play when GH jumped in. It's just like, okay, if we catch anyone, they don't have any save in their lineup. They have Stampede, which they can't use when they're stunned, but... No, that little bit of force staff usage there really turned the tides for Newbie, giving them a big fight in a Roche. Gonna be looking for more of that from them. Still a very close game. Yeah, that's actually the real first advantage that Newbie have gotten. But just the fight straight out. So they go up in the gold, they go up in the experience, but you're still hovering around that 2k just above and below for experience and gold advantage in favor of Newbie. That's not really enough to say you have a victory Loser. over Team Liquid. In fact, even if you had 20k, you don't think you had a victory over Team Liquid. It's a lot. If you're 20k ahead of 20 that's generally a win. That would be pretty bad. I don't know if I've ever seen a team come back from that. Well, you know, they're just 18k off, so if they get that in the next 30 seconds, then you're right. Radiant Looking forward to that play out of Newbie. Thanks for your analysis, oh, Mindarin. You're, you're absolutely... You're, you're a dear. Uh, Shaker ready to fight on bottom lane already. Oh, Do be a feeling just... someone is down here. They're scanning inside their own jungle, waiting for the liquid attack. This is where Moogie needs to get those plague wars down, get really good vision, which liquid already have. That observed board just to the south side of the tree line. They see the defense that Newbie have in position, even in this nighttime cycle. This is actually something we didn't talk about at all about Liquid's lineup. I think this is the first lineup from Liquid we've seen today in all of their games where they don't have a single vision hero. And that is, to me, this TI has been more about vision than any other TI. Oh, oh by top, top lane. Yep. Slam, Slam, okay. That's what happens if you don't have vision. And you die. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, on Bono, uh, Tumble got a little bit of a book reading club. In the Bottom of the map. Oh, I'm sorry, book reading club. They're gonna be down here in a while. Maybe you can cut down the trees, make some paper, and write something interesting. These two heroes probably they look like they spent a lot of years reading. The well, Lich does come with his own book. Yep. Oh. Look over my shoulder and read the tumble book. Do you guys want to get out? Oh, I'm scanning. They're, 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 they're scanning. They, they don't see anything. Like they have their observer ward near the town, but they don't know where Venomancer and Shadow Sharpen have left to. <laughs> like if they wanted to, they could drop mass observer wards at the tier two tower on bottom. They want to cut the wave. I thought they were just going to TP out, but uh, saving the TP scroll so they have the ability to move around the map, and we'll just Atom the feels safe now to walk up. And Take care of business here, get those creeps killed. Almost has the Radiance. It's a big item in this game for the Necropos. Just ramping up that farm, synergy with the Veil. You know, the more and more I'm looking at this game, the more and more issues I see Team Liquid taking high ground. Like, if you look at the build coming in from Moogie, gonna go in for the Maelstrom into the Omnia. Like, that is a oh, lot Kuro. of bonus damage, a lot of push. Kuro, Moogie actually stopped attacking for half a second. The Crypt's not from SDC that will reach him. They should drop the Serpent Force here, I think. Yeah, it makes sense. Like, you, you're gonna have ward on ward action, and then you have even more push coming in from the Maelstrom. I don't know if Liquid can really knock down that wall fast enough. And even Dyer's if they do get the advantage in the it's game, how do you then push against a newbie when they have a pre-prepared position? It's difficult. It is really difficult for Liquid's heroes to take a fight into this newbie lineup, and newbie know it. So they're just going to go for one tower into the next. This age is the more one Venomancer. He could just cross straight down to bottom and take that tower, or Dyer's just try to go for high ground. Yeah, put down a plague one, at least see what's there. They have Arcane Rune on the Death Prophet, so... Darkseer just TP'd back in. The Plague Wars don't see him deep enough. They only see Matumba, but they don't see Kuro, Mind Control, and GH. So Exorcism is up for the Death Prophet. She has a Yule Scepter taking a lot of damage, but the Master Serpent Ward's also down. Matumba taking the damage in order to get rid of a couple of them. The Moogie, there's more wars where they came from. That mid tower dropping quickly. 600, 500 fortification used by Team Liquid. Trying to hold them out. Mind Control trying to wrap around through the north, hoping to get into the back lines of Newbie. But that wonderful back combination doesn't happen. In fact, so just to get back inside the base and keep the defense going. The tier three tower at 283, but it looks like enough. Newbie are happy with the chip damage. They will now disengage. They can wait another minute and have Exorcism again, but then they won't have their Aegis anymore. So, we'll see what Yubi's play call is. I think it's a difficult one to make without the Aegis the second time. This time, that was that was not too difficult for them to realize that that was okay, definitely uh, favoring them. It's the, it's the items you're looking for. So, Aegis times out. The pipe is actually uh, flying out the courier right now to KP. So, we'll have that extra control. The Rod of Atos has also arrived for SCCC. They've got a lot of immunity on him. Your Scepter, Hooded Defiance, and now Rod of Atos. That's 1640 worth of HP that 
somehow they need to find the damage on Liquid to get through. You're still working on Diffusal Blade for Miracle. That's not there. And life gets even harder. A full Radiance is done. Oh, oh, at least for the Necro. So I say harder for Newbie in the team fight oh, to get uh, every single hit. Arca? Yeah, middle of nowhere. Uh, um, uh, oh. And Scythe. Executed. He didn't know GH was there. He blinked into the side and then GH saw him and he's like, wait, what? Yes. <laughs> Cast a couple spells, got the kill from Matumba. Nice little Reaper kill, so one minute out of the play. I think uh, GH stole in Flame's luck for finding everyone in the tree line. I think in Flame had vision. That's like a... That's a bit of a different story when you're playing heroes like Hawk and Batrider, you can really see things. And I think Liquid are doing a good job in Miracle. He needs vision of this, he's starting his spin, he won't have time, he can't TP out now. The Stampede, they're trying to close the distance so the Hex from Faith can come out, the Plague Ward, gonna block the retreat off the Juggernaut, he doesn't know it, that's why the movement path sent him back towards the south. KP comes in to lend the extra stun, and Juggernaut will fall on the top lane. I don't know if Liquid can really get a rebuttal, they're pushing in the mid lane, so at least they get momentum. Pretty but rare mistake from Miracle. He seems to always have these TP things under control and he's playing Juggernaut, but that time he didn't have it in his inventory. He uses the spins like, wait, I don't have a TP. Has to run to the side shop, Radiant's just gets caught and killed. And a big attack. kill at that. Now it's, it probably enables Newbie to, if not take this top tower, then at least force rotation and deal with their problems bottom when the, the, the Sand King was dead Radiant's for a minute. The top tier 2 tower has 451 attack. HP. Like, that's, that's not worth the defense. And there's attack. a Siege Catapult coming in as well. All they can look oh, for wow. is Raze. Really? Oh, wait, Dyer's what? Top tower okay, that's, uh... That's... What was it? We were casting, okay, bottom lane. We might go back to that moment on top lane. The Gale out from Boogie. Nova being committed. GA starting his TP. You also will end up cancelling that one. Necro wants to run away. The Lich ulti gonna bounce perfectly. GH has the stun. Boogie's BKB will also be expended to hold that lane. Was it, was it LFY we were talking about who were just so efficient with their usage of abilities? You never committed more than you had to. That was a heavy commitment from Ruby to put down the Mass Serpent Wards. Yeah, I, I didn't really like their positioning very much on that play. They Yule up the Shaker and then they melee him so he could stun them and that set up for the Chain Frost. Uh, they also used the Silence way too early on the Death Prophet. So a little bit of a misplay forcing them to use the BKB of that Venom. PP was obviously completely fine with that Hood taking very minimal damage from the literal team. But this is this is what Newbie kind of need to, to teeth out at the moment. You, you're two games down, they have been in a really dominant fashion. So we didn't really touch on it much, the fact that Newbie had to pick themselves up from such defeat during uh, the biggest match of their lives. It's the TI Grand Final. I like the way Fly talked about it, just logically, you know? It's like, you need to win three games. You can win the first three games, you can win the last three games. It doesn't matter if you win three games. And if they need to lose two games to figure out what it is Liquid are so good at and how they need to draft against them, then those are losses you're willing to take. And I think those first two games for Newbie were really drafting experience. I don't think they misplayed horribly. I don't think they were like, Radiant our coordination is so bad. They needed to learn how to play Dota against this Liquid team. And Dive, if this game is any indication, this is definitely the best chance they've had so far at taking a game off them. They stole the Venomancer, they banned out the Nature's Prophet. They are the ones playing the high tempo push style with these heroes that can knock down objectives, and Liquid are more on the back foot in this game. That they are. But they need to get into the front lines. Their four-man smoke will try and do this. Same Radiant's time, new people can do the same kind of thing, but you didn't have the mana on Faith. So he's grouping up with the rest yes, of Nubi around Roshan, which <laughs> is up. So if you do lose the tier two tower, no one's defending this. They'll even burn exorcism of SCCC mm, to ensure this Roshan goes Radiant down very, very quickly. But yeah, as you mentioned, Faith, he went back to regenerate as well as pick up Radiant's the Aghanim Scepter. Like which they are tags. coming. But do they get here quick enough? The Plague Wards are down. Karka staying outside the pit. They know that new that Liquid will have to come from the south. The Hex is out already. Radiant's Miracle spinning inside the pit. Roshan's down low. The back wall is nice. The Mass Left wards are down too. But the Aghanim is left! And Lich Yonti! It's you! Three down! The Newbie! They need to be able to find the BKB to allow Moogie to survive with Miracle. Killing off Roshan. Taking the Aegis D more. into Moogie on the retreat, the fire strike not hitting the money, Kanka has to retreat back out again, the Plague Wars making it difficult for Liquid just to get out of this got free, but now the Fuse will down from Miracle catching up Moogie, ending the dominating streak, and the big advantage that Noobie had just disappeared It's a beautiful combo here from between the Darkseer and the Earthshaker so look at how GH backs off to the bottom right, Mind Control runs and gets the two man back wall, and Shaker Fissure into Blink Echo here, and Kaka can't really get in. 
from the right hand side. He was getting his blink cancelled by the radiance of Matumba Man you see walking in. So this whole team fight for Newbie just didn't work out. I think the problem for them is that they didn't have the right heroes in the right position to break the smoke. Shadow Shaman was in an awkward spot. Oh, that <laughs> is not a good facial expression. Hippie was not ready. <laughs> They, they needed to have a better spread around the pit with Centaur yes. to the, I think, to the bottom and the Sanking to the top right so that the two assault angles from Liquid would get countered by heroes with blinks. And instead Liquid Radiant's just got an opening, got in, ran, just ran in for it. Nobody stopped the Darks here. That prepared posi position I was talking about doesn't exist when the Venomancer is still down or having to buy back when the push arrives. Miracle with the Agus Immortal does the first bit of damage to the newbie base, beating into the tier 3 tower. KP's watching him and they're looking, they get the Hex over on GH, but his Faith just gets caught out, trying to look for his own Hex, quick man to sell out. KP looking for the Hawkstar for GH, it's Fissure, Ryan the money, Kaka coming in, looking for any kind of stuns that make it so Liquid have overcommitted. Rod of Atos onto the Necrophorce, you've lost your Shadow Shama, but Venomancer, back to the world of living, Nova's available too, Miracle, you can bleed him out, but remember he's still got the secondary life, the Boris strike, they're just trying to chip away at him, that tier 3 tower, it's going, it's going, it's gone, Miracle will grab it, the spin, he wants to back out now with no magic community, it's too risky to stick around, but they got what they wanted, tier 3 tower down, the shrines are now opened up, unless Liquid, do they want to, do you have Blink Echo Slam, they could just reinsert. And that is exactly what they're looking for. You we don't have information, so they're going to take it easy. Got the ward down. Oh, get away from there, KP. My control. He doesn't have vision on the high ground. It's just a fact. They lost their ward trying to back it down. Yeah, they saw the vacuum with their plague wards. They got vision. And Liquid are going to back out. So, we were talking tradition earlier, or at least the panel were, that this is the year that, you know, China won the last year. It's, it generally alternates. That's one of the things we always have. We've never had a repeat champion in Ubi. But if Liquid win this game, we will have one tradition broken. There's never been a 3-0 in the finals. It's always been 3-1 or 3-2, and Liquid right now could make a little bit of extra history, if you will, by being the first team to get that clean sweep. It's actually a bit crazy when you think about it. It's been six previous TIs and never a clean sweep 3-0. You would think it would happen once. This could very well be the year. With that last team fight from Liquid, they put themselves in a very good position. And even the even the TI4 finals went 3-1, and that's yep. a bit... There's been... There was 3-1 at every TI except TI3. Yeah, when it went to the full five. That was the only five games yep. that we've had, I think. Alliance is the only time we actually went to five at TI. Yeah. And it, it took until Kiev for a oh, repeat at a Valve event at the Major for has us also to go to five, which was the VP OG has match. Has there even been a 3-0 in a Major in final? There might have been once. I'm not sure about that, though. Radiant's bottom we can shrine leave that to the boys attack. who love to po post up stats. <laughs> For now, Team Liquid, all they want to do is be crowned champions. And they are working their way towards it. The top two net worths now belong to the Juggernaut as well as the Necrolite. Bottom shrine has and Nubi, it's a huge ask. They have to defend. And they know they've lost control of this game. The gold graph was swung by about 10,000 in favor of Team Liquid. Not to mention the experience graph racking up about 12k to 13k movement. This is, this is a hard ask, but at least Newbie have Plague Wards up from Moogie this time around. They'll have the defense. Is that a full Butterfly? Oh, he has a full Butterfly and Jugger coming in. That's like the perfect timing for this push as well. He has another 40 seconds on the Aegis, so he's just going to run in and start hitting. It's the perfect timing, but watch that Aegis the Immortal. If we hit 33-30, you'll know the Aegis will be timing out pretty shortly, but Miracle making the most of that 30 seconds, Radiant feeding into the tower, KP with the Hawk Stomp. They have an extra silence, Juggernaut can't do damage, the Fortification's doing its work, not to mention Spirit Siphon, Kaka, Fire Strike, can they wait that a little bit longer? Put another 20 seconds so that Aegis is properly gone, but Team Liquid, once again, they go up, they take the tower, and they're looking to come back in once more. Watch that Aegis of the Immortal. They jump in, the Hawk Stomp from KP, catching to Aegis still there for the fact Epicenter is doing its work. The Juggernaut, he's dying. The Aegis Immortal in time down a fraction of a second before. Miracle's gone. The Scythe will get a revenge. KP will fall. Kuro tries to end the trees, but the exorcism from SCC, they're having the damage output to do it. Three heroes gone from Team Liquid. I want a counter on that Aegis. It had to be half of a second in the timing of the expiration date. And then food poisoning for Liquid. Invisibility. Tony Dofu, bro. 
All right. Well, Darker. I, I was I was wondering when Liquid went for this play to push bottom if they could have just taken mid racks. You know, that I was thinking, okay, here comes the butterfly. Well, let's have a look at this. Yeah, game. here's the fight. So KP gets the double stun. Kaka brings in a huge amount of damage, but it's SCC that could just stand in the middle of the fight. And there's that timing, the Juggernaut. It must have been within a second. We saw him it have was. it, then the oh, click was okay. over on the Necro, and he died with the Aegis. You heard the sound go off at the same time as the Juggernaut died. Yeah. That's that's what made it so damn That's close. timing. Yep. Timing for you. I'm wondering if Nubi had the counter in their mind. If they did, that was pinpoint accuracy. And Miracle could scratch his head and go, you know what? Why me? Why? Why me? But this is what Nubi needed. They can turn the graph around, the experience kicks back up. That was a very good fight for them. The gold doesn't swing anywhere near as much. It's not a they either. hold their high ground and they keep Liquid out. Yeah, and Venno is going to close in on level 25, which could make their base defense a lot easier. You're probably going to get that triple Plague Ward HP damage talent. It's what everyone does. Make it a lot harder for Liquid to siege high ground. Now, the one thing going for Liquid still, even though that fight went wrong, they obviously took the two tier three so they can get maybe the secondary shrine and set up for Roshan at some point soon. Um, they will want that next Aegis before they go high ground. And I think with this first Aegis, they should have probably taken the mid racks. I'm pretty sure Newbie could not have contested that. You get the wave bottom to hit, reach the towers, so the back door is off, and then you go mid. But uh, Liquid Radiant tried to maybe get a little bit too much in that one play. They tried, to win, they tried to win TI in one play. It's still not a disaster for them. Like, they're still in a good position in this game. We're making it sound like Newbie are fully just full on back in the game. I still think Newbie have backs against the wall. You know, map control wise, it's looking tricky for them. And Liquid still have that incredible team fight combination that we've just seen win games time and time again. Bush is coming in on bottom lane. Something's exciting. <laughs> We're looking at heroes picking up on this. That's, that's what it's about. What you want to look at is Nubi in just a second. They're grouping up, ready for a smart tank. They have a fresh gem of true sight given over to Kaka. Also want to point out the fact that Kaka spent as much money as he possibly can. He's still 900 short of yes. the Agadim Scepter, so you can look towards the buybacks of Nubi. And currently, only the Death Prophet has buyback available. But Liquid, they want to fight. They're five man smoked up, moving towards Nubi. But Nubi are home. They are definitely lights on. This is still going to allow Liquid to get wards out if they have any. They do have two wards on Kuro. So if this smoke, quote unquote, fails, they get map control ready for Roach. And this is a good smoke. Like, sometimes you don't find kills, but if you get the map control, it's more than good enough. Oh. TH, he doesn't know. Close call. To be honest, I thought Radiant's TH was able to smell out the armor dealer that was running right behind KP, but now it's Doobie who will group up themselves. They'll sentry ward down. They see the fact there's an observer and sentry on the hill, so SCC will break his own smoke. And Liquid, a five-on-five five fight, looks to be what's brewing on the top lane. They have their own defensive observer wall where the Shrine used to be. SCC is the man on the front lines, but it's KP with fresh Solar Crest and Pipe of Insight. He's going to need to trigger these off perfectly in order to find the opening, Kaka. Yeah, that ain't real, man, no matter how much it is being microed. This is not something, at least there's no Chronosphere to commit. <laughs> Never forget. Let's roar a ball. So, one minute for Roach. And Liquid are sitting on this high ground. They're probably not going to move, because why would they? They could just stay in this area. Never mind, they're going to move. Okay. I'll take that as tribute. Doobie's trying to make the most well, out of it. The Observer Ward saw the Courier still floating around inside the Dire Jungle. So they, Kaka can go to bottom, get some momentum, get some farm, and he needs that Aghanim Scepter up. So I, I think, so what Liquid are thinking here is, we have good vision up here. I thought they were going to stay oh, in this area, good. but they want to push one more mid, wave out mid and check the road. In many situations, you would see that the team with the high ground vision stay there with like four heroes, send one hero scouting into that Roche pit. Uh, but it was it was simply this mid wave that they wanted to take care of. Now that that's done, they're starting to get back into the SCC, Yule stepped up, they'll drop it back down again, and the Yule stepped the hit! Kaka connects on his stun, follow from KP, but Mind Control dragging them back in unwillingly into the fight. KP, he's got no way out, no stampede available, two heroes lost from Nubi. Liquid have opened the window. This is, uh, a, at the very time. minimum, uh, back, my back forced. Maybe they will even get the tier 3. They don't have those upgraded wards yet from Moogie, so the defense is nowhere near as strong. Yeah, the buyback from SCCC is used. There is no buybacks available from Nubi. So even contesting around Roshan is a dangerous thing. If that fight goes haywire, Team Liquid will be crowned champions.
Yeah, they're going to push out mid, same logic again, sending in Miracle here. They have a couple of Radiant Solutions with 15 seconds on them, so they're going to shove out this wave and go into this Roche Pit that they are 100% sure has spawned, because I think we were close to maximum spawn timer. They will, however, hesitate a little bit, showing a lot of respect to Newbie, who would be 4 on 5 without their Centaur and even a Shrine to TP on. But... And they don't have Stampede for 15 seconds, but yeah. it's a bait. Like, the scan has come in from Radiant, now it has them flagged red. But Liquid have gone back to just keep farming up in the jungle. Are they waiting for a critical item? There is something coming on the Courier. It's the full BKB from Miracle. That's what's coming. That's what's going to give Liquid the surprise advantage of the next team fight. They're going to send in a Jugger into the pit. These Plague Wars are still not tripled. So close to 25 for Moogie, but might come in just a little bit too late. Someone give this man some space. <laughs> he, he needs it. Even Shaman was coming to help him just push out the wave. But you are right, without those upgraded Plague Wars, without Liquid having to fight through basically attack towers... Go for me! They are still the superior ones coming into the team fight at the moment. SCCC does have a little bit more life to work with, now he's got that plus 10 yes. armor from the Plague yes. Mount. So trying to at least survive the damage. Miracle, the fact he's also got that Diffusal Blade now upgraded to his second level. So much to work with. Buyback is available for the Venomancer and Centaur, plus the ES and the Necro. So both sides having two buybacks for this fight. But while Mugi litters the field with Plague Wards, and he has the upgrade now, so he has he has the plus the, the three times Plague Ward HP and damage available. They could get the information they're waiting for. Their bottom wave is pushing so hard that Mugi has to send a hero back to defend. It's going to be the Centaur, and I think this will make Liquid move up. I see Matoma Man immediately moving into the river, starting to try to deal with Plague Wards. Yeah, that's great fun. Yeah, th this this isn't uh, going to happen. Really managing that. Mugi could just camp the mid lane. He leads a couple of Plague Wards in the mid, but that's why GH looks for his opportunity, coming under the cover of Shadow Blade, ventures across the river, getting his feet wet. Can't really see an opening there. Yep. They just want some. Th see, that is the problem that Liquid's lineup has, right? They they don't have that vision. They don't have any way of scouting except planting wards, so they can't really set up their amazing team fight unless they know exactly where the enemy team is. So that's what was presented. A, is it a never-ending standoff because of this? Uh, I think Liquid could once again just try to push out bottom and force a reaction, or they could oh, close close call, but target gets out. So. Liquid can try to force in bottom, since there's no tier 3 tower, these barracks have to be defended, but currently the momentum is going Darker. the way of Newbie. He's got that gem of true side, they're trying to get rid of the observer what they saw on the other side of the hill, so the plague ward does it in two shots. And Team Liquid, this is, this is not something they want to lose, so they're going to four man smoke up. Miracle just used his spin, this feels so much like bait, Boogie feels it too, scaling into Miracle. They're not committing too heavily in with the Venomance. Remember, he has that BKB. So reaction talking was all about Miracle. The virus right from Kaka. It'll connect. Follow up vision for KP. He'll get the sun off the mouse. So in the middle of the field. Dark here. Coded off. Miracle. The echo is left there from GH on the only side. And damage out for two big with the side. SDC is gone for two minutes. The list shape was bouncing back down. Kaka trying to hide himself. But right now it's all liquid, liquid, liquid. They have taken down four. He'll get the buyback from the Venomance. GH with the four stops. He won't even die. So close. Miracle with 5% HP got off that Omni Slash and it turned the entire fight. GH waited as long as he could on that bait to come in with the Echo Slam that broke the shackles and let Miracle get a spell off. And Liquid Man, that looked so scary. It really looked like Miracle would die. And if he if he falls there, it's a different story. I don't even think he had five back on the Juggernaut at that moment. But got a lot of gold from the fight. They'll take the Roche. And they're gonna more than likely just head down mid. They have 10 seconds on healing ward, so Miracle will be up to full again. And they can just do the same as previous, put Miracle on the front line. Let's have a look at that moment once more. So, so he Miracle. Wants this DD. He does. Instant stun, blink away, connect he again. Now they're gonna shackle in a moment. So here are the shackles. Miracle's dropping so low. There's the Echo Manta oh. on me. Just. Barely getting bailed out by GH. And with that double damage upgrade, it's too much. And here comes Liquid into the melee racks on mid. Still no death profit for 40 seconds. Liquid doing severe damage to the newbie home. They'll rotate towards the bottom. The tier 3 towers, that was mere prep work for Liquid. Now they follow through. A nice bar of strike onto two. They need more play wars. They need more defense. But Miracle doesn't give two hoots. Just keeps beating through the buildings. 
fortifications there to protect the rage racks and buy time for Death Prophet to come back alive again. When she's up, she still won't have exorcism. It'll be on cooldown for another 38 seconds. Miracle, a quick pushback. That's the Hurricane Pike going to work. The Tumberman sticking with it. Team Liquid, they're gonna make the play for Megas. Death Prophet, five seconds until she's up. The Hawkstones lost the Gale into the Necro. Mass Step was, they've got really good range with that Agnium's upgrade, so they can defend inside the base. Liquid can also wait this out. The Shackles, it holds Miracle. They just keep chaining him across the universe. They hold him. Kaka wants to come out for more, but be careful. GH has Blink Echo Slam up and running. Healing Ward in the back. Liquid are so close. Just one more good fight. They know there can't be buybacks on Yubi's lineup. They must have done so much economical damage that any big kill... They see everything. Here comes the Echo Slam. Is it going to be enough or not yet? The Fissure is out. Necro Control. It's a nice oldie from Boogie. Maybe the regeneration is enough. Miracle. The Agency model will pop Faith. Able to shackle him forever. Holding him. Up they come once more. No Hex. No Instant Son of Babel. Only Slash on top of Boogie. The Shrines are doing enough. And here's all of Miracle's charge. Double kill for him. Control of the back line, the exorcism, it needs to do some damage, but right now, movie dropping life flies, and GG is done! Liquid will be the first team in the history of the international to whitewash the grand final. 3-0 victory over Nubi! They have been absolutely fantastic over the last few days.